so let's recap as we discussed in the earlier theory section uh, we are going to create a cloud network with the internet gateway route tables security list public and private subnets then we are going to add a cpa customer premises equipment and dynamic routing gateway drg we'll be only be able to do as theory because we don't have an a uh, corporate account and it's only for customers who have on-site data center uh, can do that plus an ipsec connection to that so let's get started uh, we'll start with the the simplest part which is creating the cloud network we've done this multiple times so it should be easy so we're going to create it in a database system compartment i just created uh, we're going to name this uh, a vpn cloud because we are going to add vpn to this mix and at this time we are just going to say network only we are not going to go into the details and we're going to select the example of 10.0.0.tomorrow's and forward slash 16. i've got a lot of dots here okay uh, we're going to use dns host names in this VCN though we are not going to do much with them but it's a good habit to have them this will uh, create around give us a 65,000 plus IP addresses again we won't need that many so let's get started again uh, in the past we've uh, created the related resources like the subnet and uh, security list and route tables but for now we are going to do this uh, one at a time so this gives you a better feel of how to create a cloud network from scratch now we'll create a internet gateway we are again going to create in the database system i'm just going to name it igw for simplicity so it, that is created too now let's go to creating route tables so we're going to name this maybe a public subnet route as we are going to create both the public and private subnets and for destination cider block we'll just keep the the whole world and this is meant to for our internet gateway and we'll keep it open to the whole world for now We are going to keep, keep it in the same compartment. And this is the internet gateway we just created. Now let's repeat this step. And this time it will be private Okay, so we're going to select internet gateway again follow the same process and it's created okay now we'll move down to security list so this is a default security list let's edit the rules we want to make sure the all the ingress rules are coming from our data center so currently we don't have one so I've just came up with an IP So we're just going to keep this though this is not the actual source cider but this is just for the exercise purposes so let's let's move forward so we might be doing windows machine so let's add a ingress role and the port is 3389 for RDP so egress we live we let it be open because we are in charge to send out data so let's save this 
So now we need to create a security list for the public subnet. And we'll keep it in the same compartment. Let's set the following ingress role. Because this is public, so we know the traffic is going to come from outside. We're going to open the HTTP port. So we're going to modify the ingress rules. We know the traffic is coming from outside, so we'll keep it uh, to the world to open to the internet. TCP is the protocol. And we are going to say all for port number will say 80. So that helps with the HTTP protocol. Now we're going to add another one. We're going to do the same here. And only thing we're going to change the port to 443, which is for HTTPS. Now let's move on to the egress rules. So I'm going to create this list. Okay. So for egress, we're going to add, CIDR is going to be our first private subnet. Port, is, port range we are going to say all and again 80 same way we are going to add another rule we are going to start with the egress rules and this egress rules are going to be to a private subnet which is 10.0.0 1.0 port slash 24 TCP all source ports and the the port we are going to use is 1521 we're going to add another rule and this one is for And this is our second private subnet. And 1521 is the port, which is for, for the database, Oracle database. Let's save the security rules. So we should have a security list, the default one and the public one, which we created. Okay, now we're going to create a security list but this time it's going to be for a, a private subnet so as you see we already have the public subnet security list So we're going to start with the public subnet here. TCP, this is our first cider for our first public subnet, protocol TCP. Total 1521 for Oracle databases. Add another rule. This would be for our second public subnet.
Now this one we are going to add for our private subnet because as you saw on the, in the slide, we have two private subnets. One is the active and the other is for redundancy or failover. So this is where these two databases, though they are private, they need to talk to each other and the same subnet. So that's where this comes in. So similarly, I will add one for the second private subnet. Now we're going to look at the egress rules. So we're going to do two egress rules for each private subnet. So our private subnet one is fifteen twenty one. We're going to add another rule. This is for the second private subnet. And same port, we are going to use 1521. And we'll create the security list. So we've got a private subnet secure. We've got the default, the private and the public security list. So now we'll move on to creating the subnets for the cloud network. So let's give it a simple name public subnet one because that's what we've been using we'll keep it in the first availability domain and the subnet we selected for this uh, public subnet one was and because we this is the public, so we're going to act. For route table, we're going to select the public subnet route. It creates a DNS label. We can select the default DHCP. And we're going to get the public security list. So the subnet is created. So we created the public. So now we need a private as we saw on the slide. So we have two subnets, one public, one private in each availability domain. So this was public. So let's create the private one. going to select the private subnet default DHCP option and again the private subnet Okay, so we've got private and a public subnet. Now we need to follow the same with the availability domain two, the same process we did for the one. So let's create another subnet. And we're gonna name this public subnet two. We'll keep it in the second availability domain. The cider for the public subnet two is 
as this is public we are going to select public we selected public here we're going to select the default dhcp option we're going to select the public security list and we'll say create okay there it is now we'll create the the private let me make sure i have the right one we created the two now we'll create the second private subnet sorry two one we already created Route table, we're going to say because this is private, we're going to select private. We'll make this a private access. We're going to use the default. We're going to use the private. So we should have four security list uh, subnet sorry so now to add a VPN so in order to do that we are going to go to network uh, customer premises equipment we're going to create customer prem premises equipment and we'll name it as such. Now, as in the past, we just made up an IP address. I'm So I'm just going to make up one and uh, I'm just going to add this. It's not going to let us create it because we don't have a corporate account and uh, so it's going to give us an error. So this is just so you know this is how to create the customer premises equipment. Not a big deal. Just wanted to show you guys about this. The next step. So again, we need to create a dynamic routing gateway. So that communicates with the customer, on-site customer equipment. Again, this is not going to let us create, but we'll just do the steps. Yeah, so because this is for actual customers who have a a data center and who are trying to connect. So this is how you would create a dynamic routing gateway, DRG. So once if if we were allowed to create this, what we would have done after this is we would have gone to the private subnet route table. So we would go to We would go to the route tables which we had created and we would add the the rules for the private sub we would have edited this rule and this is internet gateway but if we had created one we would have selected uh, the dynamic drg and we would have been able to select that here but we cannot so 
nothing much we can do here but for certification purposes you know how to to attach those to the route rules once you would have done that you would have saved it now there is an ipsec connection you need to create for that you would go again to the networking we would have had one created here you would click on that uh, it would again give you the option of the compartment we would keep it in the same compartment we would give it a name uh, if you had multiple data centers you could have said uh, data center in Chicago IPsec connection and uh, you would have selected the customer premises equipment which we had created if they if we were able to create sorry you would have been able to to select that and the static route cider you would have needed which would have come from your on-site network administrator would have given you all that details to plug it in here and then you would say create ipsec and it would have created so basically once that is done all your tasks on the on the cloud side are done then you you take the information back to your your network admin at your data center and provide what you just created and then they plug in the IP addresses what you have to connect to so so your your equipment in the data center now will be able to connect to the equipment in the cloud so if you were to back up your your data to the cloud now you would be able to do it directly through your equipment so so that is where you would connect this way hopefully this helps i know it's a long lecture but uh, hopefully you were able to grasp what what i was trying to teach here